So if you've gotten out of a relationship with a narcissist or someone who's been very toxic in your life and definitely like a romantic relationship, what you find a lot of times is the feeling of wanting to go back to that person. Like you could be out and about and being like, I wonder if I'll see that person or I wonder if maybe I should call that person. Maybe I should text them. And you start thinking about a person in a different light than what originally made you leave them. This a lot of times can be signs of a trauma bond when someone is actually bonded back with their abuser when it's almost like a Stockholm syndrome almost but it's like the idea that they want to go back to the person that's abused them that's hurt them that's lied to them that's manipulated them and sometimes people don't know why sometimes people are confused of why do I feel this way why do I want to go back and a lot of times what builds those trauma bonds is intermittent affection and devaluation. So going back and forth. So in narcissist language, you got love bombing and devaluation. So think of it back at the beginning of a relationship. Like maybe when you first met your narcissist, your toxic person, and you got involved, like the first part of the relationship with a narcissist is typically pretty great. Like everybody's like, wow, this is amazing. Like this person really loves me. They're infatuated with me. They're obsessed with me. They're, you know, X, X, Y, and Z because the person in that relationship is in the middle of the love bombing phase. They're giving overt affection, gifts, all this type of stuff to be able to pump this person up, to be able to pump the empath up to the other person in their life up, to get them on a pedestal, to get them to a place where they enjoy, they want that praise, which all of us should to a certain extent. And then they start pulling that away. They start pulling it back. And then they start devaluing, defaming, degrading. And what happens is over a period of time, all of a sudden you're standing miles down the road and you look back and you're like, how did I even get here? Like, what was wrong with me to get here? Like, why am I so stupid to let this person control me? But it was a journey. It was a small step each and every day. So the narcissist comes into your life, he treats you amazing, makes you feel amazing, and then he slowly starts putting in small things like, you know, I thought you were going to dress different today. I thought you were going to look better. Like, do you really need to put on that makeup? Like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And small, tiny things that will start slowly coming in and starting to degrade that relationship, degrade that perspective. And then what happens is over a period of time, they keep pulling that away they keep pulling that down and you keep wanting more. And then it gets to the place where the degrading accelerates, where the rage accelerates, where the anger accelerates even more. And we get into more and more of the actual abuse or what people see as abuse more often, whether that's physical abuse, emotional abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse, like whatever it might be. And then as that abuser continues moving forward with that abuse, they get to the place where they want to come back sometimes and be the savior or be the person that makes them feel better. So what happens is you'll have a huge argument or you'll have a yelling match or you'll have a big fight and then they'll come back and they'll start love bombing. So they'll give you gifts. They'll make you feel better in different ways. And as a result, what happens is you have this like traumatic event in your mind and then it's matched up all of a sudden with a gift or with something sweet, or like affection. And slowly over time, that starts to change your perspective of that traumatic event. This is how people can stay in like physical abusive relationships for like a long period of time, because it builds such a bond. It builds such a bond that they will defend that person. They'll defend their abuse to other people. They'll even um, like fight other people away of like, no, like this is what I'm supposed to do. They'll defend, they'll lie about it, like everything like that, because a bond has been built on that type of a sequence. And so you have a session where your narcissist like rages at you and yells at you. And then they come back and they love bomb you. They give you flowers or they give you a hug or whatever it might be. They do that to be able to form that bond a little bit more. And what happens on your side is you start getting to the place where you start realizing like, hey, this, this traumatic event actually was a positive thing because this person now loves me because they all of a sudden showed affection or they all of a sudden showed some type of care, but it was false, it was fake, it was just love bombing. But over a period of time, that slowly starts changing so that that traumatic event 
And the positive, positive thing that comes after it, the love bombing, feels like love, feels like attention, feels like affection, whatever it might be. It starts to feel that way. And as a result, people start thinking, this is how I get to where I can feel. Because the narcissist will degrade you, devalue you, hurt you a ton. And sometimes it feels like, I don't even know how to feel anymore. I don't even know how to love anymore. I don't even know if this person cares about me anymore. They don't. But in that moment, a person will get to the place where they're like, I want to get back to that feeling. I want to get to the place where I felt loved. So they ignore the trauma so they can get to that feeling. They'll ignore the arguments so they can get to that feeling. They'll ignore abuse so they can get to that feeling. And then over a period of time, they start thinking that that is their worth and that is their value. And that's so not true. But it's hard to break out of that. It's hard to understand what's actually going on. What's the sequence of events of love bombing, devaluing, love bombing, devaluing, love bombing, devaluing to get to a place that they understand like, hey, this love is not real. This affection is not real. This attention is not real. And it does not define who I am. And being able to see that and start to separate that, to separate from a narcissist, to separate the fact from fiction, the lies from truth, and get to the place where a person can say, hey, I am okay and I am confident in who I am. And this person I do not need in my life to validate who I am. That's hard. And it takes a long process and it takes a long time to be able to work through that. And that is a trauma bond. Getting to the place where you can break free from that trauma bond takes time because you're literally breaking through each every, and every single lie that the narcissist has put around you. See, the narcissist has enchained you with lies, with lies that you're not good enough, with lies that you're not going to find love anywhere else, with lies that you're no one's going to love you as a single mom, with lies that you don't look good, with lies that you're ugly, with lies that you're too old, like whatever it is, the narcissist has slowly put lies around you that you get to a place through those traumatic events, highs and lows, that you start to believe. That's part of the work with trauma bonds of getting rid of that and breaking through those to do the work, dive deep, and get to the place where we deal with the facts and we deal with the truth. One to talk about trauma bonds because it is very important for people to understand what they are. It's very important to know how to work through them, but that takes a lot of time and takes a lot of effort. If you're interested in learning more about a trauma bond or how to work through it or how to break through it, um, I invite you to be able to check out an uh, event that I have coming up uh, this Saturday on December 18th, 2021 of Breaking the Trauma Bond. And in that event, we're going to be talking through different events, different things in your life that's led you up to the place of feeling this trauma bond and then looking back at the facts of the story that you're telling yourself and what you're feeling but then also the facts of what's actually going on and try to be able to help you see it in a little bit of a different light to be able to help you get to the place where you can focus on healing and change and growth. If you want to hear more about this topic, follow me. So Ben Taylor on here, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Would love to be able to talk to you. If you want to talk one-on-one -on -one sometime, check out my website, rawmotivations.com. I've got one-on-one -on -one slots there. You can grab a time and we can chat. Thank you all so much.